Hello, everybody. This is International Master Sam Shankland, and uh, I'm here again to continue my lecture about uh, my game from the recent uh, North American Fiat Invitational with Mackenzie Molnar. And I actually have a real treat for the viewers today. I have Mackenzie Molnar here for you as a guest lecturer to help out. So why don't you say hi to the crowd? Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on here. All right. Uh... So yeah, at this point, Mackenzie had just finished his amazing defense and uh, had become close to equality with this move, uh, rook to c8. So uh, in this position, white has an issue, and that's that his rook on c4 is attacked, on d4 is attacked, and he wants to really develop an initiative quickly. Now I think as I alluded to before in the last video before ending, what I had missed was that after bishop e3, bishop c5, rook c4, castles, rook to c1, black has this counter thrust, bishop takes e3. And uh, if rook takes c8, then bishop takes on c1. So um, I realized at this point uh, white couldn't really play bishop e3 and expect any advantage. So, uh, but however, if black can basically complete his development, uh, then he will be totally fine and possibly even better because of white's loosened king position. So uh, white had to play, I think, rook f4 here. So uh, what did you think of this move? Yeah, I thought this was the best move also. Because um, I saw bishop e3 would just lead to an equal position, and this is definitely the best way to keep the initiative in the position. And I didn't think there was really any other choice for uh, black than to play f6 here. Um, so. so yeah, I think what he was talking about is, for, for example, rook c7 is impossible because of queen a8. And uh, one thing I don't know if you were looking at was if, uh, up, if uh, after... Queen a7, although this is kind of a counterintuitive move, bishop e3, bishop c5, this is now impossible because after rook c1 castles, white has rook takes c5 with the idea of b4, which you didn't have before. So I assume uh, you saw this in your defensive plan? Yeah, I saw. I think I saw that line. And I mean, I think at this point there just really wasn't any choice. Like f f6 is a little bit weakening, but still at the same time, if I can just develop my bishop in castle, I should be okay. I'm, I'm probably close to equal, but... I never really quite managed to equalize, so. Yeah, that's, I think, a fair assessment. I think, for example, like, uh, over the next few moves, the evaluation of the position doesn't change at all, basically. White's very, very slightly better, but black's close to equalizing, but uh, it's kind of tough for black to complete his development. And with time pressure setting in, I think it's important for white to kind of continue the pressure. So here, uh, white plays queen to d3, eyeing the weak g6 square. So uh, now... There were some interesting resources for black, uh, but I think the best idea is what Mackenzie played in the game, which is to just keep the queen out of g6 by playing king to f7. We hope you enjoyed this video demo from chess.com. Subscribe today to finish this video and get unlimited access to our full video library. Your membership also includes access to Chess Mentor, the most advanced interactive training tool available anywhere. You'll also get full access to the Opening Explorer, Tactics Trainer, and much, much more. So sign up today and get serious about improving your game.